الحمد لله رب العالمين نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له الملك الحق المبين الذي سهل لعباده الى مرضاته سبيلا واوضح لهم الهدايه وجعل الرسول عليها دليلا واشهد ان محمدا عبد الله ورسوله الذي بلغ رسالة وأدى الأمانة وكشف الله بلا غمة ونصح للأمة وجاهد في سبيل الله حق جهاده وتركنا على المحدة البيضاء ليلها كنهارها لا يزيغ عنها إلا هالك اللهم صل وسلم على هذا النبي الحبيب محمد وعلى آله وصحابته ومن تبعهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين أما بعد فيا عباد الله إني أحبكم في الله وأوصيكم ونفسي أولا بتقوى الله ومن يتق الله يجعل له مخرجا ويرزقه من حيث لا يحتسب عباد الله قال الله تعالى في محكم كتاب العزيز اعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم قل لا اجد فيما اوحي الي محرما على طاعم يطعمه الا ان يكون ميتا او دما مسفوحا او لحم خنزير فانه رجس او فسقا لاهل لغير الله به صدق الله العظيم Dear brothers and sisters in Islam, as of today morning, there are about 636 deaths because of coronavirus. Around 31,000 people have been confirmed, there are confirmed cases of 31,000 in China alone. In outside of China, almost about 25 countries have been affected. There are two deaths and about another 200 confirmed cases, including Canada, where as of yesterday, there are about five cases have been confirmed and two is under investigation. China is building, already built a hospital with 1,000 isolation rooms and building another one. Doctors and scientists and researchers around the world are day-night working towards finding a solution, finding a vaccine, cure to save people who have been affected. There are children, including the latest victim is just a small baby who was born. While WHO has identified 15 countries, 15 laboratories in different 15 countries to do reference testing. So it's like a collective global effort to contain this virus from spreading and then taking more lives. But unfortunately, some Muslims, as usual, are using this coronavirus to establish or try to, quote-unquote, try to bring credit to Islam. In social media and also through WhatsApp. I also regrettably heard many speeches given by Islamic scholars from certain countries, a couple of other countries too, talking about how this is a punishment by Allah to a certain population. If you figure every single thing, every, all these claims and statements and words and posts, it, it boils down to three important statements given by Muslims. Number one, they say that coronavirus affected China because they eat snakes and bats and civets. So that's why Islam prohibited eating these animals centuries ago. They want to sanitize Islam, saying that Islam is the pure, most pristine religion at the expense of somebody who is suffering. Number two, coronavirus is a divine punishment to China because of their oppression against the Uyghur Muslims. And the third one is a Chinese band, the niqab, the face cover. So did you, did, don't you see Allah has forced them to wear the face cover, the face mask. You ban the face cover, Allah has forced them to wear face masks. A great argument, great logic. Dear brothers and sisters in Islam, 
This is wrong in many ways. It's unbef unbefitting from a theological perspective. It's inconceivable from a logical perspective. It's unbecoming from a humanitarian perspective. And also, it's also unconstructive from a Dawa perspective. So I'm going to briefly touch upon these four angles. From a theological perspective, the Quran verse I mentioned, uh, I recited earlier, it says that, I do not find in what has been revealed to me anything forbidden to eat except carrion, dead animals, running blood, dama masfuha, swine, pig or pork, or anything slaughtered in a name other than Allah. فَإِنَّهُ rich. These are unbefitting, unhealthy. In the fist, there are many words. فَإِنَّهُ rich. Impure. In Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam hadith, one of the hadith Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Naha Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam An kulli dhi nabim min as-siba' Wa an kulli dhi mikhlabim min al-tayr Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam forbade, prohibited Muslims from consuming any animal which has fangs, you know, which hunts with fangs like tiger, wolf, some scholars even include bats because of their fangs. Also said that any birds that prey with their claws or talons, T or L O N S, these are the animals, eagles and vultures and some people or even include sorry, bats and earlier they include the dogs as well. This prohibition, dear brothers and sisters in Islam, what we have to understand is either clinical, biological or spiritual. The reason why Allah has for, for Islam has prohibited certain animals from consuming are known, sometimes we don't know either the reason. Only Allah knows. Unless it has been explicitly said in the Quran. We Muslims try to find out the reason by looking at the scientific journals and scientific evidences why pork is haram, what kind of diseases it brings, why dog is haram, why snake is haram, etc. etc. What is important for us to understand is that science is not criterion to establish a religious fact. But the religion governs science. What if science on a day, next day, comes around and says, you know what, eating snake is, is not, no harm, we found out. Are we going to say then, remove the Islamic, we are going to give away the Islamic uh, ruling? Or science can also come and say, you know, eating pig is good. Are we going to say Islam should not have prohibited pig? So our arguments will fall flat when we rely on science to prove religion. The reason I said spiritual, some we don't have to know the reasons. Allah has prohibited that. There's enough of reason for us to avoid it. Allah wants to know whether are we obedient? Are we submissive to his commandments? We don't necessarily need to know a reason for that. Dear brothers and sisters in Islam, and also what is important for us to understand is that our likes and dislikes for certain animal or certain meat type of meat is not a criteria to determine what is allowed and what is prohibited in Islam. Because so consumption, food consumption is mostly based on social, cultural reasons. People coming from certain parts of the world will not eat something which is halal, but they will not eat. And there are Muslims I have seen who are vegetarians, who cannot stand the smell of meat, any type of meat. While living in Canada, I have seen some Muslim, certain countries, they also eat the inards of the, the cow, which some for them, some is like repugnant. So if our dislikes and repugnant and repulsiveness should not be used as a criteria to determine whether it's haram or halal. In, the, in Sira, we see Rasulullah once, he went with Khalid ibn Walid and Abdullah ibn Mas'ud, Abdullah, Abdullah ibn Abbas, to his wife Maimuna, radiallahu anha, home. He was served lizard meat, roasted lizard meat. He was about to touch it, and some women in Maimun Allah's home, they asked that, did you tell the Prophet what that meat is? Rasulullah heard this, and then he, without touching, he took the hand away. And once it was told that this is lizard meat, dub. 
Ibn Abbas asked Rasulullah, is it prohibited? Rasulullah said, no, it's not, it's not. But in the country, in the land where I come from, it is not common. I have a disliking for that. And in the hadith, it says that Ibn, uh, Khalid ibn Walid, he picked up the roasted lizard and he started to chew and eat. He says that Rasulullah was looking at me. Rasulullah was surprised looking at this guy who was eating lizard, which he, he did not have comfortable enough to eat. Does it mean the dub is haram? No. Our personal preference should not dictate what is haram and halal. It should not dictate to claim what is not in Islam. Dear brothers and sisters in Islam, this is the theological perspective I just wanted to briefly mention. And then the logical perspective is that when we say Chinese got the virus because of eating snakes and bait, bats, it's a weak logic in fact which will damage Islam than earning brownie points for Islam. Because they have been eating as part of their diet for centuries. Why now coronavirus? I remember one Muslim, enthusiastic Muslim posted about this on social media and somebody asked a question. So he said that Allah has sent a virus to them for, for their eating consumption of snake. And somebody else asked, so did your God take was trying to manufacture a virus for a thousand years? Subhanallah. Na'udhu billahi minha. Why do we have to go over the limit to bring discredit to Islam? Another one is that we know coronavirus is a strand of a family of viruses. MERS, Middle Eastern Respiratory Syndrome, in 2013 and 2014, SARS, all are part of coronavirus. It's not a unique name. 2013 and 2014, Middle Eastern uh, MERS, when it affected people in Saudi Arabia, there are more than 2,500 people who were affected, including people who went to Hajj. 800 people died. Later they found out MERS originated from, eat, from camel meat. Coronavirus in 2013 was originated from eating camel meat. So where is the logic here now? Are we going to say 2013 is a different story and then now is a different story? When we use these kind of arguments, we have to be very careful whether it's going to disrepute or discredit Islam. And then brothers and sisters Islam and uh, And this is a side note. This also I saw pointed by one of the people who, were, who was annoyed by this kind of argument by Muslims. He said that you guys are eating halal, allowed things. Then why is it that among you, diabetes is high? Why is it that cholesterol is high among you? If you look at the Muslim population in the country where he's coming from, 40% of the Muslim population, Muslims, suffer from these kind of diseases. If, you, if your argument is only snake causes diseases, why is it that your halal, actually pure things, are causing this? And with regard to the niqab ban and the corona uh, too, associated niqab ban and the face cover and the face mask, we know that there's only a small population of the Muslim women wear niqab. And then what about Malaysia, Indonesia and countries, Muslim countries where many people, many Islam Muslim women wear niqab. Even those countries were affected. They did not ban niqab. Why then should the punishment go to those countries? And then we know that face mask and face cover cannot be equated. Face mask is a very temporary thing everybody can wear even now. But the niqab is, is a religious obligation for some people who feel this is, I'm, I'm, I'm following Allah's commandment. How cheap publicity we are going to give to niqab. 
And then, dear brothers and sisters in Islam, with regard to the Uyghur Muslims' oppression, the same logic. If it is in Allah, if it is Allah's punishment, it shouldn't have killed. Shouldn't it have killed only the oppressors who are actually oppressing the Uyghur Muslims? Why it has spread even for Uyghur Muslims themselves and other parts of the country and Wuhan province? There are men, women, and children who are not part of this oppression. And other countries, all these 25 countries, including Canada, including uh, Japan, Finland, Australia. If oppression, Muslim oppression, is the reason why Allah should punish people, then obviously we understand that should come to other countries, known oppressive regimes. But this also shows that lack of deep understanding of the Quran and Sunnah, because this world, dear brothers and sisters in Islam, is not a place for jaza and akab. If it is jaza and akab, it is only partial, incomplete. The full measure will be implemented in the day of judgment. كل نفس ذائقة الموت إنما ت وإنما ت توفون أجورهم بغير حساب. Allah says that this is not the world for jaza and akab. If this is related to physical law, yes, there is a result, there is a repercussion, consequences related to physical law. But for moral law, this place is not the place to enact the punishment. When we use that, unless Allah has explicitly, explicitly said, just like what happened to Lut Ali Islam's community, or the Hud Ali Islam's community, Saleh Ali Islam's community, we cannot. Definitely, will say this is a punishment meted up for this community because of this. And dear brothers and sisters in Islam, the third point is a humanitarian perspective. When children are dying, when mothers are going through difficulties, when fathers are going through difficulties, when the entire country is in lockdown, there's a huge uh, cruise ship has been locked down. People can't come out or go in. When the entire world is suffering, humanity is suffering. Releasing these statements and talking and thinking this way is like talking about halal and haram on the beach when the tsunami is hitting. Dear brothers and sisters, it is not Rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam says, "Wama arsalna ka rahmatu lil alamin." Rasul is a mercy to the humankind. We are the ambassadors of that mercy. Where is our mercy? This is a time to show our mercy. When Muslim countries are suffering, we ask others mercy, others to help us. If what if they are using these kind of arguments, silly arguments, to hurt us, saying that Syria is suffering, Palestine is suffering, Rohingyas are suffering because of this? Subhanallah, how much it will hurt us? But why is it that Muslims we have this solitary claim for these kind of arguments, dear brothers and sisters in Islam? And also at the same time, Muslims, what is our duty is to Allah do bilas bab. We need to take precautions too. It doesn't mean that we just jump in to the epicenter of virus. Rasulullah has given us many. Precautions to the extent if they are thawun, whether one should leave the city, should not leave the city, one should not enter city. Everything is given in Sharia. What is your brothers and sisters in Islam is that even if some one one of us have a symptom, even a small cold, if you suspect this could be something, Hadith says that that person should not come to a larger gathering. He can even avoid coming to the mosque. Unless he's completely cured. If you want to wear the mask, yes. And dear brothers and sisters, Islam, and also ask du'a from Allah. That's our duty. There are many vikrs, avkars, floating around. Protect yourself. But did we ever ask du'a for the people who are in the epicenter in Wuhan province? This is uh, the broader mindset of a Muslim. He will not only look after himself or his family, but rather he will ask for protection from Allah to save from his for his community, his country, even people who are actually suffering. 
for us it's just a mere fear but for them it's a danger risk to their life a mother can get up tomorrow and think that she will not sure whether one of her children has been affected by virus and she going to lose so the brothers and sisters and I'm finally let me touch upon the dawa perspective this is very very important alhamdulillah as muslims we have our primary duty is da'i dawa either by words or by actions or by our behavior we are the walking models of islam people don't necessarily take the quran and hadith to read but they are looking at you so imagine dear brothers and sisters in islam a chinese person is studying islam he is interested in learning about islam maybe he is interested in accepting islam maybe somebody else from another country who has come to that stage he is going through that progressive stages at that time he is reading these kind of silly arguments by must put it put forward by muslims you will effectively close the door on him from accepting islam who is going to take the responsibility are we what are we going to gain this is the question i always ask is there a clear hadith or quran verses which says that un, you, if you say something like this at a time of humanitarian disaster you try to whitewash islam that you are going to go to jannah if it is so then then why can't talk like this we can't talk yes there is a clear rationale to talk it's nothing it's just we are trying to exercise our ego our superior mentality against who at the expense of who people who are suffering sheikh mohammed ibn ghazali he says very interesting he says that islam has a strong and winnable case islam has a strong winnable case but every time it loses because of weak ineffective incompetent lawyers who are those lawyers those are the muslims with this i would like to in this khutbah may allah protect all of us may allah protect us from closing the door on any people who want to become who want to become muslim or he want to study islam may allah help us to have a broad understanding of the humanity and then to under, uh, react according to what the world needs may allah help us to show the best uh, version of islam through our actions and behaviors and words May Allah protect us from doing or staying or behaving in a way which is going to bring disrepute or this damage to Islam. Wa akhidam alhamdulillahi rabbil alamin. Barakallahu barakallahu lana wa lakum bil Qur'an azim. Wa nafa'ana bil ayati wa dhikri al-hakim. Innahu ta'ala jawadun karimun malikun azimun barru'ufur rahim wa rabbun halim. Wa astaghfiruhu innahu huwa al-ghafurur rahim. Alhamdulillahi rabbil alamin. والصلاة والسلام على أشرف المرسلين محمد وعلى آله وصحابته ومن تبعهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين أما بعد فعباد الله قال تعالى قال تعالى وهو أستق القائلين وإذا قرأ القرآن فاستمعوا له وأنصتوا لعلكم ترحمون أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم قل لا أجد فيما أوحي إلي محرما على طائم يطعمه إلا أن يكون ميتة أو دما مسفوحا أو لحم خنزير فإنه رجس أو فسق الأهل لغير الله به صدق الله العظيم عباد الله إن الله تعالى أمركم أمرا جازما وبدا بنفسه تعظيما وثنى بالملائكة المسبحة لقدسه تكريما وقال جل جلاله عظيما يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل وسلم على رسولك الحبيب محمد وعلى آله وصحابه أجمعين اللهم أجرنا من النار اللهم أجرنا من النار اللهم اجرنا من النار اللهم انا نعوذ بك من البرص والجنون والجذام ومن سيء الاسقام اللهم بسم الله الذي لا يضر مع اسمه شيء في الارض ولا في السماء هو السميع العليم نعوذ بكلمات الله التامات كلها من شر ما خلق اللهم ربنا اغفر لنا ولاخواننا الذين سبقونا بالايمان ولا تجعل في قلوبنا غلا للذين امنوا ربنا انك رؤوف رحيم عباد الله ان الله تعالى امركم امرا جازما ان الله يامر بالعدل والاحسان وايتاء ذي القربى وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي يعظكم لعلكم تذكرون اذكروا الله العظيم الجليل الجبار يذكركم ودعوه يستجب لكم ولذكر الله اكبر والله على ما تصنعون اقيموا الصلاه